Hi, I'm Susan Colley, and welcome to your Disability Connection. Vocational training is a way for your child with a disability to strive for employment and increase independence. Here to discuss this subject is Stacy Leibowitz, Director of Transitions and Community Services at Triangle Inc., and Shannon Tellez, Vice President of Programs at the Price Center. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. How are you all today? Very good. <laughs> Excellent. That's good. Why don't we start out with um, wondering uh, what is considered vocational training? In, in other words, what is vocational training mm -hmm. for people? Just in general, whether somebody has a disability or not, vocational training is about getting people ready for the workforce. Mm -hmm. It's about building a skill set so they're able to go out, interview, and hold down a job. So just like anybody else going out, vocational training may encompass um, going to a technical school, taking courses, on-the-job training. So it can encompass a lot of different things to help somebody to get a job and move forward. Is it so. more uh, difficult for a person with a disability to find that niche? Yes, it's definitely more challenging. Um, the unemployment rate for those with disabilities is a lot higher mm -hmm. than those without disabilities, especially even in this job market. Uh, though having this market be so strong in general, it's a good opportunity for folks with disabilities to uh, get in on the ground floor because there are actually a lot of entry level positions that are open. So we look at it as an opportunity to get them in, get them trained, and have them move up if possible. So mm -hmm. there are opportunities no matter what, but there's a whole process involved as far as socialization, uh, getting folks, you know, the skill set they need, especially if they have different kinds of challenges. Right, and that's what right. we're, we're trying to work on and train them for. Right. Uh, additionally, we're in a position, and I'm sure Shannon, you would, you would agree, um, we're in a position of educating employers because many times they, they're uninformed, they don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Right. And so it's an opportunity for us to get out there and for the individuals themselves to mm -hmm. educate employers about what they're capable of doing. Right. And people with disabilities, whether it's a cognitive, physical, or, or both, they're going to be your best workers because they know what the situation and is. And they also are very loyal. Yes. Because yes. I have a daughter who works for yeah. uh, Peapod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she is there every yep. day yep. she gets really upset when she doesn't yep. can't work and she you know diligently puts everything together and you know they don't have to worry about her yeah you know exactly. so it's great absolutely i mean we have many individuals with just incredible longevity and employment um and i think just about training it's all about overcoming barriers. So mm -hmm. overcoming, helping the individual to overcome a barrier that they have in regards to, could be anything, transportation, exactly. soft skills, communication, um, and the employer too, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Understanding how to uh, give and feel comfortable giving feedback to an employee that may have a disability is, yeah. is oftentimes a thing that we work through with employers and managers. Right, now how does a person with a disability decide what type of training they need and how to go about getting it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we, we really specialize in at Triangle. All mm -hmm. of our day programs, and we have four that we run uh, that are very employment focused, very training focused. And we want you know the individuals, the participants, to reach their goals, what they want to do. So we do career assessments. Mm -hmm. We have career coaches, job coaches, who work very closely with uh, our participants to come up with a career plan and to you know achieve goals and steps on that path with the career plan and sometimes things don't go according to plan and you have to kind of shift and change and revisit right. but right. that's what we start off going i mean all of us our first job wasn't our dream job but it was yeah. a stepping stone to right. something else right so we follow very closely if they have a goal well what does that look like is it realistic and what are the things that we can put in place to help achieve those goals? And we follow it very, very closely. That's great. So, Absolutely. That's great. And that's similar to our program <coughs> model as well. Um, in our community-based day program, it is very employment focused. Um, and we're working with individuals yep. to try different things, mm -hmm. um, gain different exposure opportunities within the community so that way they can 
um, identify things that may be of interest to them through either um, a job training work crew or a volunteer opportunity mm -hmm. or a visit to a museum and they're right. you know discovering that they really like that environment right, um, right. and then working together as a team with the employment team and community-based day yeah. um, to support what those goals are and help kind of flush them out and make a plan <laughs> <laughs> Now, how uh, would a person with a disability decide to pursue vocational training versus going to a four-year college? Uh, is that something that you discuss with them, or is it um, you find a lot of uh, people who have disabilities go the vocational route, uh, or do they do both? Uh, in some instances, they do both. I think there are we've made a lot of uh, progress over mm -hmm. the past few years when it comes to education for those with uh, cognitive disabilities. Mm -hmm. There was a time when the concept was they can't learn beyond a certain point, they're not going to go to college, even just getting through high school mm -hmm. was something of an accomplishment. That's not true anymore. Uh, it really depends just like anybody else and I always try to bring it back to what everybody does. So not everybody's cut out for college whether you okay. have a disability or not. Mm -hmm. But we do have folks with developmental disabilities who want to go to college and are capable of learning and are extremely bright. Mm -hmm. They just might need some accommodations. Right. Maybe they have trouble with, with vocal issues. They're not very verbal or writing is an issue. We have technology that we can use these days to really support people with iPads and, mm -hmm. and other forms of technology to support them to succeed. And we do evaluations and assessments on that as we go along. So it really depends on what the individual is looking to do and what their skill set is. And so sometimes the vocational piece will be much better for them as opposed to college. But we do have somebody in one of our programs in Randolph, we have an individual who's looking to do computer technology. Right now he's working three jobs. Oh my he is goodness. really very ambitious, very bright tinkers with computers and we're looking at seeing what's out there mm -hmm. and he may need to take one course at a time as opposed to going, going and taking three or four courses like everyone else. Mm -hmm. So again there are accommodations and ways to address that and help somebody to get a degree potentially. So, yeah. Would they have vocational say for instance in that instance where they might not have the computer skills mm -hmm. or the um, like they don't know how to work an iPad or stuff or anything like that, um, would they benefit more from going to like a vocational program first before attempting? Yeah, absolutely. Before attempting college. Absolutely. And there's nothing to say you can't do both. That's so right. again, depending on their level, and there's a lot in... Shannon, I know you can, mm -hmm. can jump in on this as well, is that there are a lot of different services that are available to assess and kind of keep track as we go along to see what the best fit is okay. as far as providing supports for the individual. Yeah, so. and I think a lot of the high schools we work with, they've done a nice job with kind of laying down the foundation yeah. for skills and doing some of that mm -hmm. exploration for different careers and vocational options and help to come up with a plan around whether uh, a more traditional college route or a vocational mm -hmm. route or a combination of right. supported employment mm -hmm. um, programming would be a better fit. So mm -hmm. at the Price Center, we're focused more on supported employment um, mm -hmm. and community-based day activities that support that. Okay. Um, but really, it's it's very individualized. Everyone's their own unique person, and yep, you know, is. part of our job as providers and advocates is helping to everyone, you know, articulate their own vision and create yep. their own path. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But how can a parent, especially when they're a little younger, help prepare their child for um, for um, entering the workforce, or perhaps even? Uh, having a volunteer position in the community. Mm -hmm. So how do they, um, what should a parent do that would promote them to be able to work with people and that type well, That's of a thing. great question yes. and I know with Triangle, one of the programs that we have at least in two of our day programs is a school to career program mm -hmm. uh, and it starts at age, around the age of 16. So we work with various schools like the Randolph Public Schools and a few other of the local schools in the community uh, to serve some of those students. Uh, they come to our program for part of the day. So they're in public school for 
part of the day and then they're in our program for a few hours and we start doing um, career training we start working with them on how to build a resume getting them out into internships in the community volunteer opportunities and also possibly part-time jobs so we start getting that mindset ready earlier because individuals with uh, disabilities age out of the school system around 22, 22 so we're trying to get ahead of the curve with that and right. really start addressing it when they're younger that way the parents are aware of it as well uh, because sometimes parents are great advocates sometimes they're not as aware of right. what's out there and then their child turns 22 and it's a shock mm -hmm. yeah. so we're trying to prevent that from happening but we have a lot of ambitious uh, kids at this point, which is really great to see. They want to work, they want to participate. And so it's an incredible opportunity for them to get out there and start getting themselves immersed in the work world. And then mm -hmm. as they get towards that 22 point, they're in a much better spot for other forms of employment, more advanced forms of employment potentially. Right, and I think at home even younger than 16, just- Yeah, that's yeah. what I was, yeah. Thinking, yeah. was more like, wanting to address is yeah. what a parent can do before mm -hmm. they get to that point where they have to yeah. learn these skills you know what what can they do to build upon the skills that they will have to do so i think normalizing employment is right. huge so employment you know if a parent really wants to support their their uh child to to work, then it's talking that employment is the expectation, right. not right. just that it's something that you can do or you can't do, mm -hmm. but but really normalizing that employment is going to be part of your future. Right. Um, you know, even going to lots of different businesses in their home community, talking about the different types of jobs, talking about the different types of people, mm -hmm. um, you know, creating, introducing um, your son or daughter to local business folks so they can understand and uh, learn more about different positions mm -hmm. because there are so many jobs out there beyond kind of maybe a bagging job at a right. grocery store, right. um, which exactly. is a wonderful job and, and, and just the right fit for many other individuals, but there's lots of other things too um, in small businesses mm -hmm. um, in the community so I think just setting that expectation yeah. through regular discussion that work is going to be something that happens yes. um, is a great first step right Do you yeah. agree? I agree yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely and, and talking to your kids about what their interests mm -hmm. are as you say beyond the bagging all of mm -hmm. those things but you know making sure that that's sort of as you say the norm mm -hmm. as opposed to how it's been in the past where it's like well we'll see you know you yeah, might we'll stay put home in here we'll, and you know here's a day program mm -hmm. yeah, exactly there's a type of thing you know yeah. that most people who have disabilities do mm -hmm. or something right, and right. it's it's changing pretty, the tide which mm -hmm. is good you know. I, I, but i don't think they're changing fast enough <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and then and then there's that uh, the concern about educating parents too. Mm -hmm. I mean, having yes. shows like this, making sure that parents understand and maybe elevate their own expectations because they may not have that set for mm -hmm. their children. So I feel like we're also in a position in this field to educate parents as much mm -hmm. as possible and try to get in when they're younger so they do understand that, yeah, yeah this is what we're expecting. This is the norm and that's, that's great, so. And my guess is that Triangle, you see this as well, but um, the way that this reimbursement system is set up from the state, one-on-one -on -one job coaching is not going to be indefinite. Right. Um, there's pretty much a finite uh, yeah. amount of time in exactly. which we as providers are going to be able to job coach someone in a position. Um, and if they're not, if the employee is not going to be able to be independent in that position, then there's an issue of rightness of fit. Mm -hmm. um, so I think parents knowing and understanding that, because um, we find that a lot of young adults have these awesome jobs in the community as part of their schools, but the school really manages the job. Exactly. Right. Um, and there's that one-to-one -one job coaching. Um, and I know, um, I'm sure we'll talk more about uh, training and job coaching and things, but um, you know, job coaching won't be one-on-one -on -one forever. So it's right. important to really encourage that independence and explore different opportunities where you, I mean, as parents, we know our children better than anyone right, so right. we're we're gonna know and understand best what's going to be a good mm -hmm. fit that they'll be able to independently do the job long term mm -hmm. yeah. but some parents unfortunately i think um, doctors give them not much hope that their child will be able to do certain things mm -hmm. or in one of them being employment 
So um, it is really important to have parents in the loop and to really re-educate them mm -hmm. and not give up. You know, I think that's a, a good thing to learn. Yeah. Um, since people with disabilities have varying need, various needs to consider, what are the sum of the details that you should check before you, before you enroll them in um, any kind of vocational training or program? Mm -hmm. Well, we do a lot of vocational training on site where we are, mm -hmm. and obviously we look at other programming as well. And again, we do assessments on the individuals. We have uh, an employment specialist, uh, oh, at least great. one at each program site, sometimes two depending on the size of the program, as well as community coordinators. And we also have a clinical director. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of full service in the respect that we really try to look at the whole person and look at any behaviors, any medical issues, any concerns about challenges so we can find ways to address that in the community and help support individuals to succeed. Uh, so our employment specialist really knows our individuals. Uh, you know, if I talk about Randolph or any of the other programs, they know them so well and will mm -hmm. go, they, they're able to work in the community to try to find that right fit and try to do, have a job set up that will work for them. And sometimes these jobs don't work out. Sometimes the interviews, you know, they don't go anywhere. And that's part of the training for them as well, is to mm -hmm. learn how to deal with disappointment. Right. And, uh, but we try to find ways to accommodate and to work to build relationships with employers. Mm -hmm. I think that's a key thing, is making sure that we're doing that in the community. Again, it's about educating them, but also seeing how willing they are to make some accommodations, and then let's see how it works. And that's where the job coaching mm -hmm. comes in, that mm -hmm. we make those tweaks in the beginning, and then ideally, we're hopefully, as you know, people are settled in their jobs, we're able to back out and just do check-ins mm -hmm. to make sure that the individual and the employer are doing well. Two very concrete things. You need a mass state ID. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. And also you need to think about transportation. Yes. There's no point yeah. in finding a job or finding a job, tra uh, job training program that someone can't get to. Yeah. Um, so for, for me, those right. I agree completely yeah. with everything you said, but those are two very concrete yes. things mm -hmm. that need to be in the forefront of discussion mm -hmm. and planning. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell me what the difference is between vocational training and vocational rehabilitation? Uh, Anybody? I don't know if you want to. You want to start first? Sure. <laughs> I mean, I look at vocational rehabilitation as the as means. As the same? Um, no, I think vocational mm -hmm. rehabilitation is the means to help people overcome barriers that they have to employment. Mm -hmm. um, whereas vocational training is the preparation to prepare mm -hmm. someone to be successful within a given occupation. Okay. Um, so vocational training may be a part of vocational rehabilitation, but uh, there's so much more that goes into helping someone that has a disability, mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. them overcome those barriers, and right. prepare them to either get training or, or get placed in employment. Right, yeah. I, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, when I think about uh, vocational rehab, um, like you have uh, government organizations like Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission, they will provide services to people, say somebody suffers an acquired brain injury, right. or if you have a veteran who comes home with injuries, mm -hmm. that's where vocational rehab, that's what I think of, dealing with people who will have these kind of challenges where vocational training, like you said, it's a part of it, mm -hmm. but that's for everybody, regardless of whether you have a disability or not. Mm -hmm. So that's where some of the key differences are. They, you know, with a rehab uh, vocational training, that's where some of the accommodations, maybe mm -hmm. there are some uh, devices or different things that need to come into play to help support an individual or specialized training. Mm -hmm. So they're able to be employed. Okay. Um, can a person with a disability uh, choose to receive their vocational training online, and would this be something that you could recommend? I think that people learn best by doing. I think that having a hybrid model of mm -hmm. online, if that's going to be the appropriate, uh, the appropriate learning mechanism for some people is great. But what I've found in my career in working in workforce development is learning by doing really is um, the key to success. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that, and I think that's pretty much what we do as a hybrid model. We're in the community. We have mm -hmm. people 
This is where internships, you know, volunteering comes into play. So you're starting to build a skill set. Uh, we have something called group employment, which is sort of a step up into uh, an independent type of employment opportunity. So we say have four or so people out in the community working at a work site with a staff person who's assessing how they're doing, their skills, and then helping to, to tweak some of the concerns so they mm -hmm. can move on to the next opportunity. Correct. So, um, so absolutely, I think being able to have hands-on experience is important. There are definitely things that you can do online. We advocate for different kinds of trainings. Most, for example, job applications, they're done online. online. You don't hand a paper mm -hmm. application <laughs> in. That's all so down the line exactly. these days. <laughs> so we work with our participants to train them on how to fill out a job application. Mm -hmm. And if there are issues with their ability to read or something, then we find ways to work around that. So it is a mixture of both. Mm. So, yeah, I would absolutely. think that online, though, would be a little more difficult in the fact that if they're trying to work a skill mm -hmm. or something, say like cooking, or mm -hmm. how yeah, could yeah. they really learn that online without actually being near a stove and, mm -hmm. and cooking? And, and I think that um, I think that for people, especially with disabilities, and maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but um, I think that they really need more hands-on mm -hmm. um, than just looking at a computer and listening to what they have to say. Right. Yeah, Right. I mean, our, our programming is very much in the community. It's speaking of cooking, we do community cooking every oh, week that's great. at a local church. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of steps that are involved in that. I mean, we will do some things on the computer. Maybe people are looking up recipes to print out. So that might be the computer function. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we're out in the community. People go shopping. They learn budgeting. They learn how to shop for healthy foods, what mm -hmm. is encompassed in a, re a, a recipe to put together, mm -hmm. and then going and using a stove, being safe about it, how to put the ingredients together, measuring. So there are all these different components, and then having this wonderful dish to eat afterwards. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of example. It's a, it's a hybrid. It's a mixture of all of those things. Mm -hmm. so and we I, do some. Um, for example, one of the trainings we do is in the area of janitorial. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is, you know, it's not only is it a training on kind of the mechanics of doing it, you know, proper cleaning mm -hmm. techniques, uh, vacuuming, um, handling um, chemicals and things like that, but also you're learning on how to be a good coworker, mm -hmm. how to take directions right. from a supervisor, right. Right. Um, how to really build your skills to be an excellent future employee. So um, it's pretty dynamic, yeah. and I think that that in in our field, most of us utilize that experiential model where it's yeah. a combination of some small group conversation, web-based mm -hmm. work, um, but really a lot of hands-on to reinforce that. Mm, I think. <laughs> that there's a lot of people that could use it, never mind people <laughs> with disabilities. <laughs> but anyway, um, is it advantageous to um, have training for a particular job by an employee without prior vocational training? In other words, is it better for an employer to employ that, to teach that person? Uh, the skills that they need versus having been exposed to it prior mm -hmm. to that? I think that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I, I think it depends on what the skill set is that's needed. And we've had both uh, in that situation where mm -hmm. we've had people, like if we use janitorial, we've had people who, you know, may do house cleaning as part of our group employment or they're you know, they're learning through an internship and they're picking up that skill set. But we've also had people who learn on the job as well. I think it depends on the employer uh, and what their willingness is to teach and the, you know, the individual and our staff. So uh, we've had that across the gamut and I think it really depends. However, we really do try to make sure that people have some kind of skill set uh, mm -hmm. set up before they are hired. That, I think that is more the ideal. And then they can have additional training on the job to be specific to the work that they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, at a minimum, we're all focusing on soft skills. Yes, right. right. Um, at a minimum. But for hard right. skills, you know, it really depends. And, it, and, it, and within an employer, depending on what their new hire mm -hmm. training and orientation yeah. um, setup is, it, 
it may need to be broken down or it may need, accommodations may need to be made mm -hmm. um, so the individual uh, that we're working with will be able to, you know, successfully understand right. all components and work things through. Right. Um, I know when our job coaches go in um, to a new job site, we're immediately looking for natural supports, which is huge because mm -hmm. we want to find allies within the, within the company or the employer exactly. um, that are really going to help with that on the job training. Because our coaches, you know, job coaches go in and they work. They're not going to stay there forever. Um, but they're, you know, you need, a, you need a team within the employer to really help the employee be successful. Right. How long do you usually keep a job coach um, with somebody who needs it? I think it depends. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> There's no set amount of time. Uh, so then really they can, like, if they really, really need it, they could have somebody all the time? I wouldn't say all the time, but it really, again, we have to look at the individual skill set. And um, to Shannon's point, this is not indefinite because the funding from the state is not there indefinitely. And so we have to assess, you know, what is, before we even put the person in the job, what their skill set is. and the probability that a job coach can back out. So ideally over a period of maybe six months at, at maximum, mm -hmm. we are looking to back out and then just do check-ins because we wanna make sure we're still connected to the individual, make sure they're doing okay. And if something changes with the job, say they may have a promotion or some kind of skill change, right. we can come back in and do some more coaching. Um, but we are looking to build those natural supports just like anybody else in a job so mm -hmm. we can back out and the individual knows what to do and the supports around them can, can help and it becomes a more normalized situation. Mm -hmm. What happens though if they have if the individual has behaviors, mm -hmm. I mean, could they, could you really back away from that? I think we, we really try to be careful about placing somebody in the right job. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, for example, is on the autism spectrum and they have right. sensitivity issues to noise mm -hmm. or a lot of, of stuff going on around them, we're really going to try not to put somebody in a job that won't be the right fit. We want to set people up for success. Right. So, and we are seeing more individuals who are on the spectrum who may have sensory issues. So maybe, you know, somebody who has these issues, we're not going to have them work for a large, noisy, you know, kind of facility. We're going to have them work someplace where maybe it's a little bit more quiet. They can be alone a little bit more. Maybe they need headphones to kind of drum out some of the noise. We try to work with those things so we're setting people up for success to begin mm -hmm. with as opposed to having those issues. Um, and we do deal with people who have behaviors, absolutely, but we try to ri find the right fit right. before mm -hmm. we go forward with that. Okay. We put in a lot of work up yeah. front. Yeah. We really want to get to know the individual, know if there are any triggers, exactly. um, environmental considerations, all of, all of those yep. things we really do take into account prior to where to prior to when we begin developing the job. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's, that's big. But you know, some jobs just aren't the right fit and mm -hmm. if an employee is, um, you know, breaking, breaking the law or are totally not able to comply with expectations for the company, it's, you know, we can't salvage every job. Right. We certainly uh, mm -hmm. do our best, but we understand that, you know, yeah. uh, that the individual's <laughs> an employee just like the yeah. next person. <laughs> that's true. And, and there are ramifications. Mm -hmm. So for them, again, I, I always try to bring it back to just like anybody else mm -hmm. that deals with that, that mm -hmm. may not do well in the right. job and they lose a job, then they have to deal with you know, this is what happened, mm -hmm. this is why it happened, let's work to make sure it doesn't occur again right. in another job situation. So they understand why, and they understand the disappointment because that's part of addressing being in the real world, being in an employment situation. Mm -hmm. And it happens to all the agencies. I mean, we, yeah. we've dealt with it, and yeah. then we try to course correct and learn. And we also try to make sure that we're still keeping that relationship with the employer, if at all possible. We really do a lot of connecting with them mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make sure that we're on top of everything. Right. And, you know, we really want to make sure, can we place somebody else in this position if it didn't work out for this individual? So. Okay. Well, I thank you both for coming. I wish I could talk a little more about <laughs> this, but unfortunately we're out of time. <laughs> To gain the necessary skills required by employers, vocational training should be considered an invaluable option. The benefits are significant, especially to your child's sense of worth. Till next time on your Disability Connection.